Hi, this is Daryl Peterson, one of the technical sales managers at MicroMeasurements. Today I'd like to introduce you to some of our HS series uh, linear displacement sensors. Come on over and take a look, and this is how they're packaged. If you look on the uh, cover, what you'll see is the model number, which it's an HS50. It also has an inventory number and a serial number so that we can trace the calibration for this device. And as you take it and you open it up, you'll see the nice foam packaging to protect it while it's being shipped to you, as well as the device itself. This happens to be one of our HS50 linear displacement sensors, and the 50 corresponds to the displacement range that it can measure in millimeters. In addition, in this, in this box, what you also have is one of our calibration data sheets. And on this calibration data sheet, what you'll find is this full rated displacement, as well as its rated output at that full displacement. Along with that, you'll also see its linearity error. And that's one of the advantages to using these HS series sensors is that they have a very nice linear region. In this particular case, uh, 0.21%. Now, also what I've got set up is one of our HS100s. It's connected into this blue box, which is a model P3 strain indicator and recorder. And one of the advantages to using these types of sensors is that they're strain gauge based. So what that means is that you can connect it into any strain gauge instrumentation, whether it's a strain indicator, or a signal conditioning amplifier, or a data acquisition system that's set up for gauges. Now, along with this example, I've also got one of our HS10s, and this one has the cover removed. So come on over and take a look. I want to show you the inside of it. So if we take a close look at it, what you'll see is that you've got two small beams inside of this uh, displacement sensor along with a wedge. And as you push the end of the spindle in, it forces the wedge in between these roller bearings, and it bends the beams out. And if you look closely, you'll see strain gauges installed on these beams, and we're constructing a full Wheatstone bridge, much like any other strain gauge based transducer or load cell. So we've got a full Wheatstone bridge inside of this, and that's what allows it to be connected to any strain gauge instrumentation. So let's take a look at our example. Again, we've got the HS100, that's a 100 millimeter displacement, or basically four inches. I've also got one of our workshop beams that has one of our micro measurements CEA series strain gauges mounted on it. And these two are connected into the model P3 strain indicator and recorder. I've got the strain gauge connected onto channel one and I've got the displacement HS100 connected into channel two. Right now we're sitting at a really, really good zero condition. So all I'm gonna do now is take the uh, four pound weight and apply it to the end of this beam and we'll get a simultaneous measurement of not only the strain that's in the beam at the gauge site but also the deflection of the end of the beam out near the end and if we come over and take a look what you'll see is that channel one is 979 978 microstrain and channel number two our displacement is 0.353 inches so you could use the strain gauge to calculate stress that's in this beam, or you could also use the tip deflection to calculate the strain and calculate the stress that's in the beam as well. So what we try to do here is introduce you to our HS series linear displacement sensors. We have ones that range from HS5 to a 10 to a 25, a 50, and a 100, and that corresponds to their millimeter displacement range. If you'd like to learn more about the HS series sensors, take a look at our website at www.micro-measurements.com. Thank you.